The final week of the regular season has some big games as usual, including one division title up for grabs, as well as three more playoff bids. We'll tell you who our current playoff picks, including Super Bowl favorites, are. We'll update in-depth analysis on every game for Week 17 with the latest trends, injury news, odds, and picks as OFN NFL Preview with Tony Mejia on the Our Lads Football Radio Network starts now. All right, thanks for tuning in to the OFN NFL Preview Podcast for Week 17 in the NFL with Tony Mejia, independent sports columnist and exclusive handicapper at VegasInsider.com for this Thursday. Excuse me, Friday. That's right. We have another Friday show, back-to-back Fridays, the 29th of December, 2017, our last show for 2017. We'll be back uh, next year, uh, next week, to uh, get you ready for the playoffs here. Let's welcome in uh, my co-host, Tony Mejia, to the show. And, Tony, uh, here it is. Uh, not, not a whole lot going on you, you sometimes we got a whole you know a, a, a different uh variety of playoff possibilities so there's only three more bids up for grabs uh, a couple teams all they got to do is win in the ring and one division title uh, a lot of teams taken off this week a lot of players taken off and uh even though we still don't know who's uh, got home field in the afc so there is still some drama yeah but for the most part it's quiet and you know, i think that's that's your, the gist you're going for. Is uh, we're, we've got a lot already decided, so you know, now we'll just uh, we'll just top off the uh, the playoff picture and, uh, and finally see what it's looking like. All right, and of course, also the college football uh, playoffs are next week, and the bowl season well underway. Uh, so uh, I'm not a big bowl fan to tell you the truth. Uh, it's very difficult to handicap, uh, but I do like the big games and the big games uh, actually start tonight. So I know the, 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 in the big games, you know, you're going to get these teams uh, going out there to play. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I did uh, a show the other day that's available on demand. I went over all the games, all the suspensions, injury updates, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but uh, the playoffs are on Monday, and uh, and then after that, it's on to the first round of the NFL playoffs, and then a Monday for the uh, college football championship. So a very big weekend next weekend when you got uh, four huge NFL games and a, and a college football championship. Yep, and just working on bowls over here and uh, college hoops, so been doing that and uh now we'll turn our attention to the nfl yeah college hoops uh that will get that's why i like the, the timing of everything because once the super bowl is over then 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 you look ahead and then you really start getting into bracketology you know i kind of, kind of find it funny when some of the guys do the bracketology like uh, I, I saw somebody one of the guys it might have been a lenardi somebody did the bracketology a couple of weeks ago i'm like are you like uh, i mean seriously bracketology in, yeah well you got you got to do that I, in I, early I'll, december I, I, <laughs> Do we haven't even had conference, page views, conference man. games yet, man? It's for page views, that's all. I mean, trust me, I, as somebody who used to do those preseason bracketologies, that, 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 that's the apology for it. Well, I know why somebody, they're doing it. Somebody's very interested in it. I know I know why they're doing it. I just would wonder why any fans would be interested. I mean, really? I mean, you really would need to see bracketology right now? Man, you'd have to, get mad Boy, you'd have to be diehard. Boy, you'd have to be diehard. People like to, people like to be angry, so I somebody, guess somebody's upset that uh, that UT Arlington isn't Uh-oh. higher, despite their uh, you know they're, they're the Cinderella this year, I think. But okay. anyway, let's all start. right. That's a, that's a different topic. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's get right to it and uh, let's start first of all with uh, the big action, and uh, that is going to be in the NFC South, uh, where you've got uh, and and have you ever recalled this many games at four o'clock? No, but I mean, I, I guess they're doing things differently, regardless, because I don't, you know, they they always do have a Sunday nighter, uh, and so I, I was surprised that they just said no, we'll we'll we're, we'll opt not to do it this year. I didn't know that that was even possible. I know, yeah. But uh, so yeah, they're flying by the seat of their pants. I don't mind it, you know it. But don't just you think there's the, too many the big games though? With, I mean, I mean, it. I don't mind the four o'clock games as many as there are in a way, but I don't like the fact that most of the one o'clock games. I mean, they're really what do we got? Whether Pittsburgh or the Patriots win home field, and then they got everything important at four o'clock. I mean, I, I how many games can I watch at one time? 
I mean, All it's right. too much. Too many critical games at one time. That's my objection. Gotcha. All, All right. right. So uh, let's start with the big one, though. Carolina, Atlanta. Atlanta favorite by four. I'm a little bit surprised that the Falcons are a four-point favorite here. I don't know what everybody's watching, that everybody thinks Atlanta is that much better than Carolina. I get the three points. I know that. But four points, okay, what does that mean? Why? Because Carolina's in and Atlanta's not. All right, well, maybe. But Carolina needs to win this game not only to win the division, but to possibly get home field. So this is a big game for them. You know, they know how much easier it is if they can get a uh, division title and home field and all that. I mean, not home field, but but a bye uh, or any of that stuff. Just having this extra extra seeds and a division title, whatever you whatever the case may be. Fact is, is this game does have a meeting for Carolina. If it didn't, we would be hearing about Cam Newton not playing. That's not the case. So uh, with Atlanta, uh, if they win, uh, they're in. If Seattle loses, they're in. Uh, I've said this, though, for the last couple of weeks. I'm just not sure about Atlanta, I, and, I, and I've zeroed in on this game for that reason because I, I, as long as Carolina needed this game for something, which they do, I, I, I like them in this spot. Uh, they beat Atlanta on November 5th. There's a three-point home dog. They ran all – they actually – held the Falcons to only 51 yards rushing in that game and ran all over them. Newton uh, had 86 yards rushing. They had 201 yards rushing against the Falcons in that matchup. Uh, Falcons are just one and three against the spread over the last four games. Uh, so look, they've won seven out of eight. I told you last week, they're my uh, Super Bowl pick right now. Uh, I know they didn't have a great game last week, but we talked about that being a pretty tough matchup for them for whatever reason with the Bucks over the last couple of years. So I don't care about that game. Uh, unless Carolina comes into the mentality deep in their minds that they don't really care about winning the division title, if they actually come out trying to win this football game, I think they're going to. Yeah, well, I mean, if they're going to suit up and play, I think the the, the uh, mentality will be there. I mean, I I, I think that from for that from that standpoint, that decisions of all uh, those decisions have already been made, and that makes this the game to watch because you know above all. They're going to be looking to play spoiler. There, they've got something as you as you mentioned, uh, a carrot for them as a driving force. And you know, I, I think that the uh, the four points is just the psychology of it. Uh, you know, from a from a casual better, you're going to back the team that absolutely needs to win. And it, it just so happens that they're the reigning NFC champion and, and should have won the Super Bowl last year. So, uh, you know, from from that standpoint, uh, I think that's worth the extra point. It, it, it's not on the field. It's more based on uh, you know what are you willing to spend uh, to back uh, an, an Atlanta here. And actually, the early public money is done on Carolina. So, despite the fact that the that the spread started at three and a half and is now four, um, so mm. yeah, that's, that's a little reverse action. Okay, a little reverse action, a little reverse psychology. Uh, what about what do you tell me? If this was a game equal footing, both teams had a win to get in. Who would you go with? Oh, definitely Carolina. I mean, I think we've seen uh, flashes from Atlanta over the over the last few weeks, and and after their bye, they seem to iron some things out. Getting the new back was big, but for the most part, I mean, we're, uh, numbers don't lie, mm -hmm. and we're still talking about a dramatic drop off in points production from them. You know, it's double digits. Uh, so, you know, be it Sarkeesian or be it Matt Ryan or be it whatever you want it to be, uh, this isn't the same offense that flourished last year. And, uh, you know, that's a major issue in, in going up against the Carolina defense that, you know, comes in mostly intact. We'll see if Shaq yeah. Dawson plays. You know, that, that's going to be a problem. And you do wonder also about if Atlanta does not make the playoffs and let's say they don't have a great game offensively, do they fire Sarkeesian? Uh, you know, that's yeah, he, he might be the scapegoat. Absolutely. Yeah, that could happen. Uh, but you do figure if they get into the playoffs that that's uh, that that's probably that that'll buy him more than likely another year, you would think. Um, but you never know. Uh, but uh, look, and, and 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 last week with with Freeman fumbling at the, at the goal line and we and he almost fumbled away the game against the Saints a few weeks ago. Look. I, I like Freeman as as a running back. I think he's a good player. When he was when he had the proper coaching last year, play calling, he he was a lot more dynamic, of course, than he's looked this year. But he's a good back. Uh, but I'm gonna say this: Look, I, I don't think that he's the type of back where he makes those mistakes like he has uh, in the last several weeks. And and the coach and I understand what the coaching staff is gonna say. We're behind him, but. Uh, if he if they go on, they're at the goal line again early in the game, and they give it to Freeman. I, I'm 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 sorry, but I, I that's not to me that's not the way to go. If, if you've got some some mid level kind of backup, that's one thing. Then you just work 
you know, Freeman to death. You got Tevin Coleman back there, and you got Devontae Freeman making mistakes. I'm sorry, but but you, you don't just allow guys to make mistakes. Okay, makes mistakes. All right, we believe in him. Okay, makes mistakes. Oh, we, no, you know what? Give the ball to Tevin Coleman. Don't you, I mean, you know, show the rest of the team that there's, a, there's certain responsibilities here. And, and we've got a really good player back here at his number two back. And if you're going to keep fumbling the ball and keep spots, we're going to give it to Coleman. Yeah, speaking of regression in that offense, I mean, both of those guys, Coleman and Freeman, have had issues over the last few weeks, be it injuries or be it, you know, fumbles. Yep. So yep. They're, they're certainly to blame with the miscues. Just a couple notes here for me. Uh, the under is, is a perfect four for four. In Atlanta's last four, oh. uh, and okay. Carolina, the over is actually five and one, uh, with the the one anomaly coming last week, and and they're, you know, forty one points scored in their win over uh, over Tampa, so that okay. that stayed under. And uh, the win total is at stake for the Falcons. As they oh. really pegged them, really pegged them. We're at nine and a half, and here they are at nine and six. So they're either gonna make the playoffs and and make overbackers happy, or or complete a flop, and, and you know that's entirely possible. All right, uh, that's interesting. Okay. By the way, first road game for Carolina since uh, the game in New Orleans uh, in uh, early December. So uh, I think that was three straight home games for them. Uh, so now they're back on the road. Sometimes that is something to keep an eye on. And Alex Max also dealing with an, an injury situation. And uh, needless to say, how huge that would be if Alex Mack couldn't go. So uh, with, with they're having enough problems running the football if, if something happened to Alex Mack. So you definitely want to – I know a lot of people don't pay attention too much to whether centers are going to be uh, available, but you definitely want to find out on Sunday if Alex Mack is playing in the game. Yep, left tackles and centers, you know, right up there with, with quarterbacks and, and key, key, uh, key playmakers as, as far as guys that need to be out there, you know, to get a uh, – Oh, right temperature on a team. But yeah, I mean, like, it, it, this could also be a situation where Carolina gets out early. Atlanta, you know, the, the, the Mercedes Benz, uh, you know, Dome might work against the Falcons. True. There, there will be a very uh, unhappy place to be. You, good point. All right, now let's stick in the division because the Saints are also playing at four o'clock like every other team in the NFL on Sunday. And the Saints are a seven point favorite at Tampa Bay. Uh, like initially you look at that and you go, oh, I mean, I'd love the Saints to, uh, one score. Tampa Bay's terrible. Uh, they've lost five straight. The Saints can win to can clinch the South with a win. Of course, this is this means something for New Orleans uh, or, of course, Carolina loss uh, clinches the division as well. But this means something for them. Uh, but Tampa Bay, even though they've been losing, they they have been in some close games. So there is that. Uh, you, look, everybody knows that this is Dirk Cutter's last game. So, uh, I mean, you might as well fire everybody, including uh, uh, the team president, if, uh, if if he's not fired. But and really, yeah, that I, escalated quickly. He went from uh, you know, <laughs> you know, people really having uh, hopes for him. Yeah, he might not just be a coordinator. Well, to, uh, you know, and that, and that that turned. I thought on hard knocks, it was obvious that he was kind of a little in over his head. Oh yeah. Well, oh yeah. I mean, again. Look, I mean, I've said this on the network for the past uh, two years that that the guy, I, I, it was a shock to me when he got hired. I mean, you don't hire guys that are unsuccessful college head coaches. That's why the only way Dirk Cutter would ever make it would be if he had Aaron Rodgers or Peyton Manning as his quarterback. That's it. I mean, there's nothing else. I mean, that's like Jim Caldwell. I'm sorry. I mean, the guys like Jim Caldwell and Dirk Cutter, they're never going to make it in the NFL unless they have superstar quarterbacks. And I'm not talking about winning Super Bowls. I'm just talking about being successful, making the playoffs, you know, every couple of years. But Dirk Cutter is way, in way over his head as soon as he got the job. It was, he should, never should have uh, been hired, and that's why the GM's probably going to go as well, I would think. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we'll see if they can send him out with a win, plain spoiler. Um, I doubt yeah, it. Yeah, certainly – <laughs> yeah, you know, it, 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 the spread I think I thought was right. You know, sure. right around seven. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we'll see. But we got Teron Armstead con continuing to uh, vie for the Cordy Glenn Award of uh, offensive lineman with with the, the questionable question mark on on their you know left on their shoulder pads. So you might we'll as well leave him plays. out and try to get him healthy. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Um, you know, they got Brandon Coleman now, I guess, was, was banged up, and uh, Ricardo had surgery, so he's going to be gone. They've already lost clients. So, yeah, I mean, they need the win, but they also need to stay healthy uh, to make my Super Bowl predictions come true. So, we'll see. I think they pull this game out, but uh, the cover may be, may be tougher to get. Yeah, I mean, I can understand that. I mean, I do like the Saints. I mean, there's there's no question. Again, the win and cover thing, I know that uh, there were some issues with that formula last week, but uh, I'll stick with it. Uh, again, the, the idea is you just stick with it all the time, uh, and uh, chances are, statistically, it's going to pay out for you. So I'll, 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 I'm going to stick with the Saints, give the seven. Uh, they beat Tampa Bay 30-10 to 10 early November as a seven-point favorite at home. And uh, keep in mind, though, the Saints have lost their last two on the road. Okay. Yeah, early sharp money knocked that was was on Tampa actually. So really? seven and a half. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the uh sharp betters took the took the half point that's now not available as it's seven pretty much across the board and actually uh Westgate is is looking for some New Orleans action because they've dropped uh, the thing uh, six and a half. Okay. All right. And again, as I've said uh, before, uh every uh so often, just to remind new listeners that my formula is to always buy the half a point okay uh let's go to uh the other key game in the nfc for the playoff picture and uh because it's going to be either atlanta or seattle so if atlanta wins the win if they lose then seattle needs to beat arizona they beat the cowboys so they came through for me last week now they take on an arizona team and this could be bruce arian's last game we're starting to hear about that uh, maybe that's even why the Jets uh, decided not to wait till the end of the season to give Todd Bowles an, a, a contract extension to some of those rumors that we were hearing in Arizona. Uh, but uh, as far as this game, uh, Seattle, uh, the defense came up big last week, as expected. Uh, we talked about that, you know, with uh, KJ Wright being back, uh, Wagner uh, maybe being a little bit more healthy. So. Uh, is, I would expect Seattle to have no problem shutting down Arizona, the home crowd and all that, realizing that if Atlanta can lose that game, that they're going to get to the postseason. That place should be a madhouse. Keep in mind, the dog in this series is 3-1-1 one one straight up, 4-0-1 oh against the spread, the last five in this series. Uh, but uh, I'll go against that trend in this one. Uh, it's Again, Seattle's a 9.5-point home favorite. Yeah, and I mean, they opened eight and a half, and I think everybody's on Seattle, and I, I would be inclined to believe that they're going to win this by double digits. Um, you know, we'll see if Larry Fitzgerald uh, decides to come back, but could be his last game, same situation he was in last year. Uh, by the way, first time, believe it or not, Seattle has been a favorite since beating San Francisco on the road November 26th. So that also tells you the kind of schedule they've had to deal with. And uh, they beat Arizona by six as a six point favorite uh, on November 11th in Arizona, uh, holding Arizona 34 yards rushing on 24 carries. And that was when Adrian Peterson actually carried the ball 21 times in that game. I would suspect much of the same here. Uh, and uh, if Seattle wins this game and covers, I would expect it to be, tell you the truth, I'm looking at something like 31 3, to tell you the truth. I, I think they'll. Uh, have full domination. The only thing that I think that maybe get go, get Arizona going is is Bruce Arians' final game. But I think maybe they got that out of their chest last week at home. Like the whole Marvin Lewis thing that we'll get into in a little bit later on. I think that's already gone. They did that last week at home. Sent them off probably a, a nice winner on their home field. All right. Uh, now let's go to the AFC. And the big one is the Tennessee-Jacksonville game. But this is really going to be a mystifier because we really don't know what to expect from Jacksonville, whether the starters are going to play the whole game, uh, how, how intense they're going to be in this game. See, I'm willing to forgive them last week for two reasons. One, the whole East to West Coast thing. But more importantly, because by the time they played the game late, late last week, they had already clinched. And I'm sorry, but I've seen it happen a lot, especially with young teams. When you know you've clinched something and the game already – or I mean already. See, not only does this game not mean anything, but the game last week when, when they stepped on the field last week didn't mean anything. So was it a surprise? I don't think so. That all of a sudden they started making all sorts of mistakes. Yeah, Doug Marone says they're going all in. Uh, you know, that may be the intention, but – We'll, we'll we'll check on that mid first quarter because uh, I don't buy it. I I think out of any team, well, there there's a ton of teams that that can use the approach, but 
they're certainly one of them as far as guys that are banged up and can use a week just to chill. And I don't think it would, it'll affect them mentally whatsoever if they uh, opt to take that approach and pull guys like Ramsey who can deal with hamstring issues. They got issues on the offensive line. Cam Robinson, Marquise Lee's been banged up. Alan Hearns hasn't been playing. Mercedes Lewis has an ankle. So, you know, I, I, to me, I think this is a situation where they, you know, might go all in for the first few drives and then turn it over to backups. And, you know, oh, oh well, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if you're the other AFC teams, you don't want to see that, the, the, the playoff contenders. But that could be a situation where Tennessee, uh, Tennessee uh, gets an advantage. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what to think about this. I, I'm, I'm, I actually believe that the right strategy, because every team is different. When you're a young team that hasn't been in the postseason in a long time, and then you have a really bad, sloppy game like you had last week, I don't think you want to go into the postseason uh, just with the with the kind of just. And I know maybe you take some of the starters out, but let's just say some of the. I mean, the starters are going to play, so. I don't want to have a couple of bad games in a row of getting into sloppy habits. I just don't want to do that. I want to get this team back and motivated. They got destroyed by Tennessee earlier on this season. It's a division matchup. It's an opportunity for you to show some respect, like you said, around the league and to turn around on that when you're facing a division rival and 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 knock them out of the postseason. I think that's what you want to do. Uh, uh, look, I, 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 I can understand though, if Tennessee wins the game going away, like you said, and the backups come in, I can I, I understand that. And that's why I, I, you can't touch this game. I just don't think you can do it because you, because if Jacksonville plays the game, I think Jacksonville wins the game, but if, if they don't, then I, yeah, Tennessee is going to win going away because Jacksonville's just not going to care. And, and it's like a bowl game, isn't it? You don't know. Well, that's, that's exactly my point. I don't, I don't think you can touch this if you're going Jacksonville. Just because you don't know what to trust, because the, the the your your points well taken, but they the 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 approach of uh, of getting the kinks out and and getting into a rhythm can be accomplished with a solid first quarter. Then boom, starters go out. That's true you know, too. They, 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 and you don't want those guys out there in the second half or in the fourth quarter playing a meaningless game. But they do I have mean, a good defense. But they do have a good defense. So if they get off to an early lead, like a two-score lead, maybe the defense holds on. I'm not saying that they're going to keep all their defensive guys out. But see, with the NFL, as you know, though, there's only so many guys that can sit the bench. There are going to be starters right. out no, of the no field. Doubt. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about I, – I don't like expect Bortles. to see Ramsey out there. I don't sure. expect to see Bouye out there. Understood. From that defense mm-hmm. in the second half. I mean, I think you're going at it with a backup secondary. And if the Titans obviously need that game, then Mariota, you know, he hasn't played well, but he has been better of late. And he can take advantage. And to me, I think Tennessee's the play here if there's going to be a play at all. All right. Well, I, okay. And I get that. Um, I still believe that they're going to lose. I get a sense that they are going to end their season on a four game losing streak. And uh, that uh, there is going to be an outcry to get rid of Malarkey. Uh, it's interesting. I was looking at an article uh, by Cameron Wolf on ESPN in early December, and he was kind of backing the malarkey hire because at that time they were eight and four. And he was talking about, hey, you know, malarkey and his style and his tough style. And it shows on the on the field because the Titans are eight. No, uh, in games decided by four points or less since start of the 2016 season, including four. No, in 2017. Well, since he wrote that article, uh, they have lost three straight. Uh, by a total of 11 points. So, in other words, they have <laughs> lost those close games, my friend. Uh, yeah, some writers jinx. It's okay. Well, but that's also something where you should know whether or not you're going to write that article. You better be. You better be back. You better back the guy. You better have confidence that Mike Malarkey is a good coach. And that's where you know how I felt. And I'm not sure, you know, if you disagree with me on that. I wouldn't have written an article backing Mike Malarkey. Let's just put it that way. I just think he, he deserved to have that happen to him. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens. Because, look, you, you can't lose this game. I mean, you can't lose four straight to end the season and lose a game to a team that doesn't need to play. You can't. I mean, that, that, yeah. that would be. Marco Murray won't play. Uh, we'll see about Logan Ryan. That's obviously big. LaShawn Sims already ruled out. So, yeah, yeah I mean, look, they've got to overcome some obstacles and they got to get this job done at home. You know, simple as that. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, to me, it's. The, the spread is three because uh, the Jaguars intend to play, uh, and I, I would I would think that they uh, that the three is obviously more attractive than the six, and so you know you might you might want to take the help there. 
All right, let's move on now to another big game in the AFC, and that is Baltimore, uh, a 10-point home favorite against Cincinnati. As I said last week, I really felt if you're a Baltimore fan, you should root for Cincinnati to win, get the whole Marvin Lewis thing out of the way. Uh, I actually went ahead and took uh, Cincinnati in that game uh, because, remember, we were talking about everything coming down to, or at least you should definitely keep an eye on who's going to be active and who not. And Cincinnati had a lot of key guys that were active. And I don't think that was a coincidence. I just don't. I think those guys, the Burfics and all those guys were playing that game. They wanted to get the win at home. Not that they had a great game or anything, but just the fact is, is that, you know, it didn't mean something. And I, you know, they showed it, they won the game and now forget it. Now I think they're done. They've shot their wad, uh, Baltimore. Now look, no question. Baltimore has got to play better than they did against the Colts. I completely get that. You know, if, if they, if, if this game is close going into the second half, I think they're in trouble because the, the slightest little misstep here or there, uh, depending on, you know, I'm assuming Cincinnati is going to play everybody because they don't care, uh, is going to, is, you know, who knows? You know, Baltimore could start feeling the pressure. They get the win. They're in the playoffs. But still, look, if, if Jacksonville plays the game and beats Tennessee and then Buffalo loses to Miami, which is entirely possible, Baltimore can still get to the playoffs, but take care of business against a Cincinnati team that is no way deserved. Uh, of being on the same field with you if you want to be a playoff team. And I think they will. I think they'll they'll roll on this one and uh, and fly into the postseason. So you're laying double uh, – you're laying the yeah, 10? Yeah, I'll lay the 10. Yeah, I think they'll win easy. We shall see. I, I'm, I'm, I obviously won't make a decision on this until game day. But, yeah, Perfect is now doubtful. And uh, and Denard and Mixon and Sean Williams are all now questionable uh, depending on uh, on whether their, their availability – you're right. They could have uh, been done after last week. Dog in the series is five and two straight up, six and one against the spread last seven, including when Baltimore beat Cincinnati as a two and a half point dog week two, shut them out 20 to nothing. Baltimore rushed for 157 yards in that game and forced four Andy Dalton interceptions in Baltimore's win. They're five and one in their last six. And yes, this is definitely Marvin Lewis's final game. Uh, in uh, as the coach of the Bengals. So the question is, what do the Bengals do? Do they stay in-house, or uh, do they bring in another coach from the outside? So that'll be strange, seeing a new, another head coach uh, with Cincinnati, hearing all the ru- – I mean, we're hearing all sorts of rumors. I tell you the truth, we've heard – I'm hearing the Gruden rumors – uh, from Washington, which could be interesting, but uh, of course we're also hearing the John. Do you think do you think John Gruden's coming back ever? Like if Cutter leaves, uh, yeah, at some do you point think- I do. At some point I do, but right now the the gig's still cushy, uh, and he's he's the highest paid employee at ESPN. So you know I think he he uses his name being the name that is on everybody's list at number one as leverage to sweeten the pot and uh, as he should. And so he needs to ride that ride until the perfect opportunity comes. Tampa. It obviously wasn't going to be the University of Tennessee because it's going to be in the NFL. Yeah, and it probably isn't going to be Cincinnati. Tampa. So, uh, the, 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 what's that? Tampa. Oh yeah, if he wants to return, sure. Yeah, sure, absolutely. That's why it's perfect if, opportunity. If he, if he wants to, you, you think that though? Yeah, I do. I, I think I think the rumors that were because I mean, look, we, we hear rumors about him every year, but I think now with Cutter going about to get fired, I think the time is now because I think he could have been back three years ago. So now we're getting to the point where, come on, I mean, you, you got to start coming back any any year now and with the buck job open i i think that's perfect for him i i mean i think he'd well, want to go back why wouldn't you yeah he, he's made no secret of his affection for Jameis. so yeah you know from that standpoint, that is a great situation there and you have a good young quarterback there too absolutely he knows that's, how tough I it mean, is that's, to me that's on the plus side if he's coming yes absolutely so i think it's all setting up for him perfectly to come back to tampa um so i went and of course you know uh I'm 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 talking about Jay Gruden, you know, whether he would leave Washington to go to Cincinnati where he's got ties. I think that's possible. But um, that all depends also with maybe what happens with Kirk Cousins. Who knows? Maybe he'll take Kirk Cousins to Cincinnati with him. I don't know. All right. Let's go to uh, the other big game in the AFC. And that is the Chargers in Oakland. And the Chargers are an eight point favorite against the Raiders. So. Uh, you know, I mean, look, uh, if Tennessee wins and Baltimore wins and they're supposed to win, then I guess uh, the Chargers don't get in. But I- I'll tell you, because I am 
I, I am going to like if I, I, I will I, I will say this. I, I, I am gonna pick the Jags. I'm not gonna wager on them, but I will pick it just because as I said, I just get the feeling Tennessee's gonna lose. And therefore, if Tennessee does lose, then that opens the door for the Chargers to get in because the Chargers need interesting enough. They get in a couple different ways, but the only way that really get in is is definitely they win and definitely Tennessee loses. So if Tennessee wins, no matter what, they're done, the Chargers. Uh, but then also uh, the other way is is Buffalo would need to lose two in one scenario, and then the other scenario, uh, Baltimore wins. So, But uh, it's, it's all of a sudden become a lot harder for the Chargers. Gordon's uh, banged up, so they're starting to really feel the heat uh, with injuries. Uh, you know, if 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 uh, 90 percent of the other quarterbacks in the league were playing with the Jets last week, they would have buried the Chargers. Uh, the Chargers completely were outplayed in that game. But Petty was terrible. Uh, so I, I just kind of worry about this game being a big spread. But the Raiders stink. But they uh, they, they played hard against the Eagles. And it is a division game. Yeah, again, you, you're going to definitely want to know that's a that's a big foursome that currently listed as questionable in Gordon Perryman, O'Kung, and, and Corey Lidget. So, man, that, if, if, they're, if they're available, that means all hands are on deck and you should feel comfortable. If they're not, then very easy to stay away from this game. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually leaning towards taking the, the, the Raiders in that one. I might even uh, go with them at the money line. Just with those injuries, uh, I'll definitely be uh, – obviously, a lot will tell on those injuries when I hear about them on game day, but I'm kind of thinking about the Raiders. Uh, by the way, I don't know about Jack Del Rio. I, I would think Del Rio would be back, I, I, uh, but I will say this. There's no doubt in my mind that they need a new offensive coordinator. I mean, Todd Downing might be a really good quarterback coach. Okay, fine. But he is awful. As an offensive coordinator, he's never been a coordinator before. This offense is a just disaster, and there's no excuse for it. Nothing. I mean, you want to give me an excuse for a month when Carr's out, fine. But the oh, the rest of the games when Derek Carr's in there, everybody else is healthy. This offense has looked terrible, and there's only one difference. Same thing with Atlanta the coordinator. Yeah, I mean the drops have been uh, a problem all season. Uh, I, to me, it's a, just a, a young team that checked out and shouldn't have. And does that fall on Del Rio? Yeah, but Do Del Rio did back? build up enough goodwill to, uh, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a coin flip. I think if they want to give him, if they believe in him enough to be like, okay, we'll give you a mulligan on the season because uh, everything that could have gone wrong did. Um, but yeah, certainly he's got to make some changes on his staff and uh, is on a short leash leash going forward. Yeah, I kind of would think that because of the way that the team kind of like the whole chemistry thing that does fall on the head coach and that would bother me the most. It does feel like the, the organization with because they're young, it's like they need a, a young coach. They need a young, fresh mind to come in there with an offensive mind with the, with that talent and, 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 and kickstart that organization. That's that's what I would do. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, by the way, the dog in the series has won, uh, excuse me, has covered six out of the last seven. Uh, the Chargers snapped a four-game series losing streak when they beat the Raiders on October 15th on a uh, field goal by Novak as time expired in that game. Chargers are 5-1 and one in their last six, but 1-3 and three against the spread in their last four. The Raiders' offense has only scored 42 points in the last three games all right let's go to the other big game in the AFC the Bills uh things did not work out for Buffalo you know we knew that chances were they were going to lose that game to the Patriots but the fact is is that that loss was even bigger than maybe we could have anticipated because a lot of other factors happened that put the Bills in a tough situation now because they need Baltimore to lose uh or uh they need Tennessee and the Chargers to lose so uh, that's asking quite a bit. Plus, they have to win a tough game. They're a three-point favorite on the road against Miami. The Dolphins have won their last two home games, including the win against the, the Patriots, even though they're just 2-7 and seven in their last nine. They beat the Dolphins just a couple of weeks ago. Cutler threw three picks in that game. Uh, look, I've said this before. I know that you know there's been a lot of stories you talked about with Adam Gaze and, and all that stuff, but I kind of like Adam Gaze. I like what I've seen. I'm going to I'm I'm going to say that 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 he's going to fix things there. I'm not a big fan of some of the other 
uh, uh, other personnel in, in, in the front office, but I, I do like Gaze, and, uh, and, and, and I think the Dolphins are going to win this game. Uh, as far as last week's loss for the Bills, uh, a couple of ba- I thought there were a couple of bad decisions by McDermott. Uh, I don't know what it is when you play the Patriots. These these coaches go into these games and they think they got to do all sorts of crazy stuff, like that early field goal they should have kicked. Oh, um, no, nope, let's not take a field goal. We need a touchdown. Come on, just kick the field goal. It's early in the game. <laughs> and and then and then to go for the 51 yard field goal. I know Hauschka's kicked all these long field goals, but it was like, dude, it's like a short distance. Just go for it. And then he, all right, whatever. But the fact is that I thought there were a couple of. Uh, inexperienced moves by McDermott in that game. Uh, and then, of course, the Benjamin touchdown, non-touchdown was a big factor. So th- there was a game until uh, until they fell apart late. But that's what happens. If, if you don't make all the plays and get all the breaks against the Patriots, you're going to get beat up. Yeah, it was a tough week to, to take the points with them and the Browns, things I say you shouldn't do when I did them. Um, and really, the, uh, the Browns thing, nobody to blame myself. But New England uh, was – Definitely vulnerable in that game. Brady wasn't sharp. Bill should have covered. Yeah. Bill's uh, should have flirted with an upset if it wasn't for that ridiculous Benjamin thing. I tweeted out something about the league being uh, being charitable on Christmas Eve, and they should have just sent the Bills uh, a memo just not to show up because they were going to give the game to the Patriots anyway. Take the night off on uh, and be with their family. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, we talked about this last week. This is another game where I just don't like what I'm seeing out of Brady in the passing offense. I, I don't think that they're once they step up in competition, as long as they don't get any like lucky breaks of who they play in the postseason or anything like that. I think if they're going to play teams, even like the, the Ravens or again, maybe the Steelers or the Chiefs and they got to beat those two teams and then they got to beat a Super Bowl team. I I, unless all of a sudden a switch turns on and the passing offense looks better, I don't think they're going to win it this year. I just don't like the way their passing offenses look lately, and I'm I'm assuming that has something to do with Brady. He's probably not 100. percent Yeah, but I, I, he, he still gets the job when when Gronkowski's out there. It's it's just unfair. I mean, his his either he beats somebody one on one or Brady's taking advantage of what you're doing to try to neutralize Gronk. And it, I mean that that alone is is the formula. And so if, un- unless Gronkowski goes down, you know, the, the Patriots just stole my champion for that reason. They're uh-huh. going to win a bunch of shootouts because I don't trust their defense. All right. And uh, speaking of the Patriots, 15 point favorite at home against the Jets, no reason to think that they won't blow out the Jets. Look, the fact is, is that uh, if Petty, look, it, 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 Petty's playing worse than he played last year. So he, he, there's, there's something he, he just doesn't feel comfortable, obviously with Morton's offense, because he just looks like he is completely lost. He's not comfortable. He's not confident. Uh, his mechanics are all off. So uh, I don't see how that's going to change here. Matter of fact, I think we're going to see Hackenberg in this game. So uh, we might even see him early in the game. Uh, definitely a half of football. Patriots should annihilate the Jets in this one just because of the fact that New England has to win the game for home field. So they're going to be into it. Plus, Belichick hates the Jets. So they're going to try to win this game as uh, you know lopsided as possible. So keep that in mind if you're afraid of giving 15. Uh, even though the Jets are 7-1-1 one, one against the spread the last nine versus the Patriots, keep in mind last year Petty started in Foxborough. And the Patriots won forty-one to three uh, as a seventeen-point favorite. And yeah, you're playing. You're basically playing a, a, against the back door here because they, they are going to want to boat race the Jets. No question, they want to get want to get the result in hand and then get Brady the heck out of there. And so, from that standpoint, you, you, you know, you'll probably see conservative offense. So who's their backup now? Hoyer. Is that who we're going to yes, see? Yes, yes, Hoyer, correct. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see Hoyer, and then, and, and, yeah, I mean, and if you're right and we see Hackenberg, then there is no potential for a back to recover. But if it's Bryce Petty and he <laughs> finds a rhythm, maybe they sneak in there and, and make a 21-point game, a 14-point game down the stretch, the uh, final play of the game or something. Yeah, the, uh, the, the the real season for Jet fans like me start uh, as soon as the regular – as soon as the Super Bowl ends. That's when I get psyched with $90 million in uh, – uh, in cap space and uh, and top draft picks and picking one of these quarterbacks in the top ten and fingers crossed Baker Mayfield but I'll take any of those guys uh, you know but tell you the truth I don't good, even good time to address it now I mean uh, obviously one one carrot now is going to be bold there for and, and having some stability uh, you know your thoughts on that 
Yeah, no, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. Uh, I think he's uh, I, the smartest thing he did was hire the new coaching staff. That's the smartest thing he did. I think it alleviated a lot of him having to be responsible for things because a lot of the coaches that he had there previous to this past season were just not very good. So he brought in a really good coaching staff, uh, including Morton, even though it's his first year on the job. I mean, how can you not say Morton didn't do a good job considering who the quarterback was there? So he did a very and that offensive line and the young players and the turnover and personnel. So they did a very good job uh, and that helped Bowles out. I think Bowles has improved. So, yeah, I like the continuity. I agreed with the extension. McCagnan has done a really good job as well. Uh, you can't hit on everything, but I think overall he's done a good job with some of the deals he's made. And I think they're heading in the right direction. But again, uh, now it's about getting that quarterback. And you know what? I don't want to tell you the truth. I really I I, I know this is not something the Jets aren't going to have to worry about, but I, I, I just the whole Josh Rosen thing would scare me to death. You know, his concussions. I just I'm sure he'll get probably picked by the Giants because Sam Darnold will probably see when Sam Darnold comes out and says, I'll go anywhere. And Josh Rosen talks about maybe not wanting to go to Cleveland. If you're the Browns, he, you, your decision has just been made for you. Because I don't even think it's that bad of a decision to go with Sam Darnold over Rosen anyway. So I'd be like, okay, thanks. That, that's my decision. I'm going with Darnold. Screw Rosen. Uh, unless, of course, the Giants are, you know want to want to pay the, the Browns something and you move from one to two. And then you get something out of it. But still, you know, let the Giants uh, move up and get Rosen like we saw last year with the Bears. Uh, move over and take Darnold. Uh, and then the question is, is how many other teams are going to jump up and try to get, uh, you know, Josh Allen? I don't think the Jets are going to have to trade up to get Baker Mayfield. So, uh, no, probably not. No. So uh, the question is, uh, you know, like the Bills, you know, the Bills and other teams are going to want to move up and probably get Josh Allen. So I definitely think Allen's going to be in play at number one. Uh, you know, I, I think the shoulder's been an issue all year. The offensive line has been. I think if you get that guy and work out, then he is just going to be that. I mean, you can believe in him or not believe in him, but as far as within work the workout setting where it's just him trying to impress somebody oh, yeah he'll he's, he's, he's gonna look he's gonna yeah. pass the eye test for yeah. sure wouldn't Probably that scare you though or Al, or wouldn't that, but that that's good see that would scare me that for josh allen to go to cleveland see sam darnold i think no matter what i think sam darnold is the type of quarterback that will do fine i don't i'm not gonna say he's gonna turn i agree into, but josh allen has got accuracy issues he needs time to develop uh, he can't just be thrown to the wolves, and I just don't want to see his confidence get destroyed in Cleveland. That could be, to me, that's the worst place for Josh Allen. So, um, but we'll see. You know, that's what Cleveland does. They make stupid picks. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll you know, uh, they and they're at Pittsburgh. Now that they have a real GM, according to them. Well, you know, so. Dorsey is not the best, but he's definitely far from the worst. So, yeah, he's a scout guy, and that's definitely what they need. Uh, they're in Pittsburgh, and it looks like they're going to be winless because Pittsburgh is playing at the same time with New England. Now, what we could see here is you go into halftime. If Cleveland is hanging in long enough and Pittsburgh all of a sudden knows, because there's no doubt in my mind that if they're smart, Tomlin's going to take a look at the scoreboard at halftime. If the Patriots are up 24 nothing, he's going to realize the game means nothing. And then you're going to rest all your players, wouldn't you, in the second half? Well, yeah. I mean, I I, I thought that uh, they were going to take a, an approach of, of letting guys – Le'Veon Bell is out already. So, you know, Roethlisberger's not playing. So, to me, I, to me, I think this game is is what it is. It, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a scrimmage, and the Browns have a shot. But, I, like I said, I've learned all of the hard way the last couple of weeks. Is that you figured – there were certain spots where I thought the Browns would finally get one, the Packer game, which they had control of last week, which they had a shot in. Um, and again, no Ben, no uh, no Antonio Brown, no Le'Veon Bell. They presumably have a shot this week. Why not? I guess. What do you think the spread will wind up being? Uh, I, well, probably if, if those guys are out. Yeah. Officially. Yeah. So I think it's it's a six point spread, something like that. Right now it is. It off the board, right? Yeah. Right now it's it's six, six and a half, and some places have it off the board. Um, if those guys played, it would be a ten and a half, eleven point spread, easy, with the anticipation being that uh, that at some point uh, they would leave. But if they don't play at all, it'll probably get down into the five range. Five you know, you know what? You know, here's the thing, though. This is this is what I don't agree with. This. Let's just say. All right, because, again, it's not like the Jets don't have a, a, a terrible defense. It's a rivalry game. Let's just say for whatever reason it's 6-3 halftime. 
you're going to tell me that Pittsburgh, the coaching staff, ain't going to be going, did we do the right thing? Because you, did, hopefully, you're telling me Pittsburgh doesn't care about whether they go to New England or not in the AFC Championship game? I'm sorry. You get an extra week off with the home field. I, I, don't, I don't believe in the strategy at all. I think it's wrong. It, 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 look, if you want to, if you want to rest Bell, maybe that's one thing. But Roethlisberger, no, I wouldn't rest Roth, Roethlisberger because that, that's almost like potentially giving this game away. And I'm just not giving the game away, you know, just to say, okay, yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure our Patriots are going to win that game. But you, you just never know. I mean, you never know. And and I just just imagine if the Jets were to win the game and Pittsburgh played all their backups and lose. Just imagine how stupid they'll look. They've got Pouncey and Foster up front listed as questionable, and Landry Jones has been named the starter. So, we'll see. Right. I mean, it's, it's it's clear that they they don't have no belief, no uh, no faith in the Jets. No, I mean, I understand. I, I'm not. Look, I completely I get it why they're doing what they're doing. I'm just saying, I you know, I it's it's something that could come back uh, to, to to bite them, but we'll see. Probably not. Uh, but you know what? I think Cleveland's had a bad uh, money line choice, to tell you the truth. I'm not saying to, you know, empty the wallet like even last week against the Bears. But if you're looking for money line plays, it's not the worst idea in the world with Landry Jones, a quarterback. So, I mean, it, uh, you know, he, I, 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 OK, he's better than Kaiser, but not by yeah, much. He's better than Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that good. All right. Kansas City and Denver. And here's one of those spreads because of uh, uh, Pat Mahomes is paying. But you know what? It's Paxton Lynch against Patrick Mahomes. How do I know Patrick Mahomes will now play uh, uh, Paxton Lynch? Uh, Chiefs uh, have uh, won four straight against Denver. Uh, they, they've they won three straight. Uh, they're secure in their spot. That's the reason why they're, they're resting, uh, who they're resting. Uh, Vance Joseph, we talked about him, whether he's going to wind up coming back. Uh, I mean, look, Denver's lost eight of 10 games by 10 points or more, four of those games by 21 points or more. Uh, you know what I think about Vance Joseph. The question is, uh, what does John Elway think about him? Uh, but, uh, look, at least it's interesting if to tune in, even though I'm sure we won't because there's other big games to tune in for, but you know, uh, I'll, I'll be interested in watching, uh, the film after the game on, uh, Mahomes and Lynch. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see how, how, uh, whether Akeem Hunt plays, but he, he probably won't. And then you got, uh, Tyreek Hill out. So I, you know, they're, they're going to be cautious. So we, we don't know what we'll see from, from Mahomes as far as, playing to his tendencies because you know if you give him the range in the game that meant something then you'd expect uh, uh, you know a full game plan if they're just trying to get the kids feet wet then it'll be a conservative approach and that should play into into Denver's uh you know the Denver's favor since their defense has actually shown up over the last month and uh, and presumably will finish strong Von Miller you know has stated that he he wants to go out there and and just wishes that the game meant some a little more but you know Talib's going to be out there um, and you know he'll, he'll be working against a, a receiving core that's obviously decimated. So you know, for that standpoint, I can definitely see why Denver's a three-point favorite. Yeah, I wonder about. No, I mean, I got a kick out of Jamal Charles' uh, statements this week. Like he wants, I guess he wants to pull a J J James Harrison. He wants to get cut and go to a playoff team. Uh, and then he, I, I, for, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I heard that Jamal Charles had signed with Denver, the first thing I said was, why? Why would he go to Denver when they have Anderson and they they also have uh, a couple other good young running backs? What is he doing there? He should be going somewhere where they have a questionable running back situation where he could actually win the job easy. So he's he was, he was only himself or his agent to blame that he didn't get an opportunity to, to, to play. Yeah. So I don't know what he's talking about, but not getting an opportunity. What did you think was going to happen? All right. Uh, the other games in the NFC, uh, Philly's got a home field. That's why they're a three-point dog because they're resting everybody. Foles is starting though, right? I think so, yeah. And, and, again, that's a situation where we'll see how long they choose to expose You know, their, their, their key now considering no when. So, uh, a I, series? I, I would anticipate he <laughs> plays a quarter and you've yeah. got to give him the hook. You remember we talked last week about the uh, most uninspiring four touchdown performance that we've seen uh, in the giant game. And then we, exactly the, the proof is what we saw against the Raiders, because if anybody thought the Eagles still had a shot after the giant game, uh, you had a big wake up call in the Raider game because that offense with falls looked awful. 
So they've got- yeah, I mean, and, and I understand wanting to go out. All you can do at this point, you can't do anything but get this guy some reps responsibly, and just cross your fingers and hope home field and the running game. You might as well. Enough. Yeah, he, you might as well. You know, he's, he's, he's going to be a game manager and, and he, he can succeed in that role because if they get the protection up front, they've got a stable of running back that you can get creative with and, and, and move the ball downfield without putting it in danger. But certainly Foles is Foles and he's not going to turn into something different overnight. Uh, do you think Jason Garrett is ever going to get fired? No, it doesn't sound like it. Although, you know, you can all, only trust Jerry's word, though, uh, you know, as far as you can throw him. And he drinks a lot of Blue Label, so I don't think you can throw him very far. Uh, a lot of calories in that whiskey. So, you know, to me, it, it's it, 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 he, he he got the immediate uh, seal, seal of approval. But uh, I don't know that, you know, Garrett should sleep very uh, soundly, you know, going forward. It could be a, a very volatile situation with him this offseason. Yeah, I mean, I understand he's a puppet and all that, and I get that. But there's other assistant coaches out there, uh, or not assistants, but, you know, I mean, young coaches in college and the pros that would die to, to be a head coach in the NFL and might be willing to be a puppet for a few years. So I, I don't understand why he just doesn't go out there and try to find some, you know, some quality coach. I mean, I'm not saying – Yeah, I mean, all, all it takes is for the right guy to be available, I think, and, and maybe that's – that's why he's still coaching it, and he hasn't materialized. Mm-hmm. But again, that's that, that's something that could change from day to night. So, Maybe Brett uh, Bielema will be the head coach. Yeah, at, uh, yeah he didn't do his uh, alma mater uh, very good, so probably not. No, I, I uh, doubt that one. Yeah, Chicago, Minnesota, and now uh, Minnesota needs the win. Now this is a good game to take because Minnesota is eleven point favorite at home. They need the win to clinch the bye. Uh, so, uh, I think that this is worth it. Uh, I haven't heard anybody sitting out for Minnesota. Have you? Uh, no, I don't think so. And even, even still, if you're going to pull the plug on the offense, uh, on the first, the first team offense, you know, say halfway through, you still got Teddy Bridgewater to kind of, uh, there you go. Make Good sure point. You don't get back doors. Good so, point. That, that, that could be, that could be his, uh, crowning achievement. If I like that. 17 comes back and, and make sure that Greg DePalma wins laying playing heavy numbers there you go uh by the way bridgewater uh that's that that's an option for for teams that can't get those top quarterbacks in the draft bridgewater is going to be right up there he might be the top guy i mean i know there might be some talk about andrew luck but i doubt the colts will be will uh, be able to get value for luck so uh bridgewater maybe a jet next year that's possible i wouldn't give up the the eighth pick in the draft for bridgewater but i would definitely give up one of my two second round draft picks for him yeah, I mean, there's no question. If if he is 100, percent that he's one of the top 32 by far. So, no question. All right. So uh, Minnesota beat the Bears by three on October 9th, uh, but uh, they'll win this one by more than 11. Uh, and then San Francisco is a three and a half point favorite at the Rams because Jimmy G is perfecto and he's four and zero, looking to go five and zero with the Rams sitting all their players. So uh, don't forget uh, early week three when the Rams beat the Niners in that exciting game, 41-39. We remember that one. Uh, And the Niners, uh, though, are just rocking and rolling. Uh, It just shows you what happens in the NFL with a quarterback change because the Niners are not a very talented team. But you put a quarterback in there and just look at what happens. So, uh, yeah, not a surprise that the Niners are a three and a half point favorite in this game. And why wouldn't we think that they'd be able to win and cover the game the way they've been playing and with the Rams backups? Right. Absolutely. All backups out there. It's, you know, there's not much of a home field advantage for the Rams, even in, as excellent as they've been, have established in, in the soccer stadium. So, oh, no, they're not in the soccer stadium. They're in the open. But, you know, sentiment's still the same. Coliseum. Yeah, no, but nobody exactly, will be there. Yeah, Coliseum is not exactly daunting uh, for the Rams so far, which is going to be an issue, I guess, uh, potentially in the first round. Well, look, I mean, this, that's going to be proof right there. I, I mean, if you can't show up and sell out that place in that first playoff game, then that's already going to be a indication that uh, the NFL had no idea what they were doing as usual, putting a team there. Because th- th- that place has to be sold out for a playoff game, but probably won't. Uh, all right, and the other games, Houston at Indianapolis, Washington at the Giants, and Green Bay at Detroit. Green Bay sitting, I think, uh, 50 players in the game, so you might like, actually, to take Detroit. Stafford will probably have a tremendous game, which 
um, week too late uh, for me and you because uh, he didn't do much with his fantasy performance last week. Did you actually start him last week, by the way? No, I went with Rivers, which was the right move, but I still lost. No, oh, okay. Uh, and then uh, Eli Apple having the controversy there. Boy, I heard Davis Webb is getting no- is going to be the number two quarterback this week, Tony. Ooh. They'll have a ceremony, <laughs> ceremony uh, uh, changing of the guard at some point, I assume. Like uh, Eli will come out for the final time and knight him. And then we'll come I mean, in and throw an interception, on. and they'll hug it out on the sideline. It'll be fun. Everybody's sitting this week in all sorts of reasons, and the Giants can't have the 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 balls to sit Eli Manning this week for Davis. Oh, you got to start him though. Let's all right, good. Just start, start him. Start him game. for a series or two. I'm happy with that. That's but what then I'm get saying. out. You got the changing of the cards. I it'll hope be, so. It'll be fun to watch. And then and then Eli is saying that you know he he you know as far as now, I don't know what Eli's comments about competition mean. If he's talking about Davis Webb or if he's talking about them drafting a guy, number two, like Josh Rosen, look, if if Eli Manning is there next year and they go out and they draft Josh Rosen, there is no competition. Eli Manning is not going to get beat out by Josh Rosen in, in training camp. He's just not. So so I, I that's that's the only reason why I'm, that, that I, I can think of is the Giants, if they pick, make that pick for the quarterback, that they're going to be extremely patient with that quarterback, and he ain't going to see the field for a year or two, uh, and, you know, as long as the Giants are, are, are you know, doing okay. Uh, because, I mean, why would you? I mean, that's why if you're going to hold on to Manning, then you're going to play him. No, I mean, you, the, I, that's true, and you got, you've, got, you've got the perfect mentor, but I, I think that there is the immediate pressure to win next year because you do have pieces in place that, if healthy, you know, Make you a playoff team. Odell Beckham, Shepard showed sure, up this year. Sure. Ingram won't be a rookie anymore. So you've got to get them the football. And at, 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 from that standpoint, if Rosen comes out, out and after a month is is really impressive and and, and practices, and Eli might get some competition then in, in about October. All right. So uh, Tony, enjoy uh, the. Uh, do you have your college playoff uh, picks or reports coming out? You do no, it no. I mean, it, it, it stays because I'm, I'm basically dealing with Saturday stuff first, and then uh, and then I'll move to that. But I, nothing has changed my mind on on Clemson Alabama winner being my champ. Ooh, we got the exact opposite. I like that. I got right. I got Georgia Oklahoma winner winning the national championship. I actually going with Georgia to beat Oklahoma. Uh, but I think uh, I like both of those teams. I think the Georgia Oklahoma team wins. So there you go. And I do think Clemson beats Alabama. Uh, Mayfield is, is really sick, supposedly. Yeah, well. That's what they're saying. Maybe he had too of, much, uh, what, too much of that Heisman? No, no, dinner. no, no, none of that. Seraphim, lots of Seraphim going on over there in the, in the Mayfield residence. So, okay, well. Yeah, you got to have him in interesting. quarantine. But no, supposed, supposedly it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger deal so where they, they want to make sure plenty of fluids are on hand. So maybe if that makes a difference for you back Georgia. Well, yeah, if that does, then definitely. I mean, I, I'm going with Georgia, even if Mayfield's 100 percent. But uh, yeah, that would definitely uh, be big trouble for Oklahoma. But uh, yeah. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll 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 talk more about that next week. We'll have our playoff uh, uh, predictions and all that kind of stuff, including the wild card weekend games next week. So, uh, Tony, uh, appreciate it as always. Uh, have a happy new year and we'll talk to you in 2018. Sounds good, and get to Vegas Insider because all the all the uh, ball stuff and and playoff stuff they were all ramped up, and same with basketball, so plenty of content. Awesome, thanks, Tony. Thanks, guys. All right, that's Tony Mejia. That's it, Vegas Insider. Go there for. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's so much going on in sports right now. Once the football season's over. You've got the college basketball season. And uh, by the way, we're going to have wall-to-wall college basketball over at Prime Sports Network. And uh, I don't know, maybe I can talk uh, Tony to do some college basketball uh, stuff with me over at Prime Sports Network. But that's that's another network and another time. Uh, that's actually my network. Uh, but anyway, football is still going to be here with us all the way through to the Super Bowl. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, we'll talk college football as well. Matter of fact, I've got a show at 5 o'clock uh, talking college football. So uh, that'll wrap it up here for the R Lads, uh, the OFN NFL preview show with Tony Mejia. Uh, we'll see you at 5 o'clock when we talk college football. Uh, we have a Clemson 
uh, reporter, so we'll talk to him about Clemson and Alabama. We had uh, some other interviews uh, yesterday uh, with our national uh, writer uh, regarding everything in the playoffs, so that's available on demand at ourlads.com. And uh, as I mentioned earlier in the week, I did a show handicapping all the play, all the bowl games, including the playoff games, uh, and uh, that's available on demand at ourlads.com. So uh, we'll see you next week here on OFN NFL Preview. Thanks for tuning in.